Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We're in our fourth episode in our series on current trends in bodybuilding and physique sport. And I want to talk about the, the contest experience, Adam, that, that people have. And I've told this story too many times on our podcast, but you know, I still remember at 20 years old going to my first contest and, and how exciting it was, how, how focused I was for months. It was just my entire life. And then you get there and no matter what you think you're going to experience, it's just bizarre. It's wild. Like to, all of the activity, the things going on, expediters telling you what to do, competitor meetings. Um, and, and then I learned that every organization, every promoter runs things a little bit differently. But it, it, it makes me wonder even to this day, as new clients are getting into the sport for the first time, you know, what, what the experience is like at contests now versus, you know, what led to this point. And, and again, you know, talking about what we might expect in the future. So what are your thoughts on all that? Yeah, you know, I, I remember my first show and it just being amazing to be backstage, you know, something I hadn't been a part of. And, uh, you know, then just processing the whole, whole thing. It gives you appreciation for shows when you go. You know, I think for me, you know, just going through the process, there's nothing that can really, um, really make you appreciate it other than just going out there and doing it. And I, I really encourage more people to at least try it once, even if you're just a fan, uh, maybe give it a shot. I just had a husband of a client who decided to do it. He's been to, I think, the past four national shows she did. <laughs> And he's getting ready to do it. And uh, I'm really excited for him because he'll he's never been backstage with her because um, he's always let me take the rings. But I think it will be really cool for him to kind of see what that backstage process looks like. And uh, it, it really is one of those things. Um, not everyone can do this and be good at it, but it is something that everyone can do. And uh, it's not as much as a closed knit community as people think that it is. So um, I'd more so just like to take this opportunity to invite more people to do this. Well, you know, I, I promoted shows for probably 15 years, maybe even 20. And my, mine typically here in the Midwest, Indiana, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty small. I think the highest number we ever had was 100 people at a pro-am. Some of them were in the 40 to 60 range. And without a lot of, of huge organizational support from the federation that you're promoting in, it, it can become, you know, kind of a mom and pop business experience. And, and you, you've got to have volunteers and expediters and so forth who are there. And what I've seen, contrary to that, as the sport has evolved, is a lot more systematic procedure in most organizations. And so now a lot of times some of the same judges are traveling show to show, they're helping out. There is a process that they follow, the check-in and, and all of that stuff from, from weigh-ins to competitor meetings to getting your numbers and so forth. It, it just seems, of course, digital processes have, have improved that because now you get so much stuff online, but uh, it, it really seems to flow much better and, and I think that anybody who goes into a show now will, will probably have a better experience with that than they did maybe 10 or 20 years ago. But I also have to say this is still governed by promoters. You know, it just depends on who that person is, who's running the show, what their experience level is. And the, the one thing I want to say is kind of tagging on to what you said, you just have to experience it to even know what it's like. I remember a client competing for the first time a couple of years ago who had a great, great physique. And I, and I told her, I, I almost hope you don't win too easily too soon because you're just not ready. Like you need to go get in the flow. You need to know what the, the whole experience is like. You need to be backstage at a couple of different shows. You need to be in front of judges more than just a couple of times before you win. And, and I think that really does improve everybody's enjoyment of the sport. Just, just knowing that there's a process for you to progress through as a career. Absolutely. I'm looking back on that moment and I'm actually really amazed I didn't miss my class, you know? Um, I mean, I did, I sat back there the entire show, but uh, aside from that, I really didn't know much of what to expect backstage. I just, I didn't really research it that much, but 
I just remember sitting in the same spot and like, oh my God, how many classes do I have before I go? But uh, that was before bikini even started. So my shows inherently got longer as I competed more. Well, you know, that's another great uh, example of the trends improving. Now, uh, a lot of organizations have gone to live judging. So you don't have to sit there for 22 hours of, you know, of a single day dragging friends and family, you know, to 12, 18 hour apart pre-judging and finals. Uh, a, a lot of bigger shows have gone to two, three, four day formats. So they're not trying to just rush people through. It, it really does seem like, like the entire sport has got its act together as a business model, making it, making it friendlier for competitors and audience members. Yeah. I think it's really helped the sport to have those options. Do you think there's anything on the horizon that's just different? Is somebody going to come disrupt these kind of things and make it better than ever? I could see live judging being more regular. However, I think you're going to see a higher, higher ticket cost, but um, you know, it could cut down the amount of time a promoter needs a venue. And uh, I think they could just make it more enjoyable for the athletes to be honest. And, and that's, again, as a business model, I think that's where it has to go because a lot of people just get tired of, you know, just the rigors of, of what it's like on, on that particular weekend. But um, we got one more episode for you guys. We're going to talk about some of the, the division changes, something that Adam and I have talked about extensively in the past, but again, with this perspective of, of what may be coming in the future. So we'll see you guys next time as we wrap this up in contest prep university.